there is no shortage of interest in learning about ancient Egypt. The ancient history of the country has always attracted us like a magnet for mummies, pyramids, pharaohs, etc. That's why I tried to highlight 10 unknown things about ancient Egypt in today's video. 1. Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Along with King Tutankhamen, perhaps no figure is more famously associated with ancient Egypt than Cleopatra VII. But while she was born in Alexandria, Cleopatra was actually part of a long line of Greek Macedonians originally descended from Ptolemy I, one of Alexander the Great's most trusted lieutenants. The Ptolemaic dynasty ruled Egypt from 323 to 30 BC and most of its leaders remained largely Greek in their culture and sensibilities. In fact, Cleopatra was famous for being one of the first members of the Ptolemaic dynasty to actually speak the Egyptian language. 2. The ancient Egyptians forged one of the earliest peace treaties on record. For over two centuries, the Egyptians fought against the Hittite Empire for control of lands in modern-day Syria. The conflict gave rise to bloody engagements like 1274 BC's Battle of Kadesh. But by the time of the Pharaoh Ramesses II, neither side had emerged as a clear victor. With both the Egyptians and Hittites facing threats from other peoples in 1259 BC, Ramesses II and the Hittite king Hattusili III negotiated a famous peace treaty. This agreement ended the conflict and decreed that the two kingdoms would aid each other in the event of an invasion by a third party. The Egyptian Hittite treaty is now recognized as one of the earliest surviving peace records and a copy can even be seen above the entrance to the United Nations Security Council chamber in New York. 3. Ancient Egyptians loved board games. After a long day's work along the Nile River, Egyptians often relaxed by playing board games. Several different games were played, including mehen and dogs and jackals. But perhaps the most popular was a game of chance known as Senet. This pastime dates back as far as 3500 BC and was played on a long board painted with 30 squares. Each player had a set of pieces that were moved along the board according to rolls of dice or the throwing sticks. Historians still debate Senate's exact rules, but there is little doubt of the game's popularity. Paintings depict Queen Nefertiti playing Senate, and pharaohs like Tutankhamen even had game boards buried with them in their tombs. 4. Egyptian women had a wide range of rights and freedoms. While they may have been publicly and socially viewed as inferior to men, Egyptian women enjoyed a great deal of legal and financial independence. They could buy and sell property, serve on juries, make wills and even enter into legal contracts. Egyptian women did not typically work outside the home. But those who did usually received equal pay for doing the same jobs as men. Unlike the women of ancient Greece who were effectively owned by their husbands, Egyptian women also had the right to divorce and remarry. Egyptian couples were even known to negotiate an ancient prenuptial agreement. These contracts listed all the property and wealth the woman had brought into the marriage and guaranteed that 
she would be compensated for it in the event of a divorce. 5. Not everyone was mummified. The mummy, an eviscerated, dried and bandaged corpse has become a defining Egyptian artifact. Yet mummification was an expensive and time-consuming process reserved for the more wealthy members of society. The vast majority of Egypt's dead were buried in simple pits in the desert. So why did the elite feel the need to mummify their dead? They believed that it was possible to live again after death, but only if the body retained a recognizable human form. Ironically, this could have been achieved quite easily by burying the dead in direct contact with the hot and sterile desert sand. A natural desiccation would then have occurred, but the elite wanted to be buried in coffins within tombs, and this meant that their corpses no longer in direct contact with the sand started to rot. The twin requirements of elaborate burial equipment plus a recognizable body led to the signs of artificial mummification. 6. The living shared food with the dead. The tomb was designed as an eternal home for the mummified body and the Ka spirit that lived beside it. An accessible tomb chapel allowed families, well-wishers and priests to visit the deceased and leave the regular offerings that the Ka required, while a hidden burial chamber protected the mummy from harm. Within the tomb chapel, food and drink were offered on a regular basis. Having been spiritually consumed by the Ka, they were then physically consumed by the living. During the Feast of the Valley, an annual festival of death and renewal, many families spend the night in the tomb chapels of their ancestors. The hours of darkness were spent drinking and feasting by torchlight as the living celebrated their reunion with the dead. 7. Few Egyptian men married their sisters. Some of Egypt's kings married their sisters or half-sisters. These incestuous marriages ensured that the queen was trained in her duties from birth and that she remained entirely loyal to her husband and their children. They provided appropriate husbands for princesses who might otherwise remain unwed, while restricting the number of potential claimants for the throne. They even provided a link with the gods, several of whom, like Isis and Osiris, enjoyed incestuous unions. However, brother-sister marriages were never compulsory, and some of Egypt's most prominent queens, including Nefertiti, were of non-royal birth. Incestuous marriages were not common outside the royal family until the very end of the dynastic age. 8. The Great Pyramid was not built by slaves. The classical historian Herodotus believed that the Great Pyramid had been built by 100,000 slaves. His image of men, women, and children desperately toiling in the harshest of conditions has proved remarkably popular with modern film producers. It is, however, wrong. Archaeological evidence indicates that the Great Pyramid was, in fact, built by a workforce of 5,000 permanent salaried employees and up to 20,000 temporary workers. These workers were freemen summoned under the Corvi system of national service to put in a three- or four-month shift on the building site before returning home. They were housed in a temporary camp near the pyramid, where they received payment in the form of food, drink, medical attention, 
and for those who died on duty burial in the nearby cemetery 9 egyptians of both sexes or makeup vanity is as old as civilization and the ancient egyptians were no exception both men and women were known to wear copious amounts of makeup which they believed gave them the protection of the gods Horus and Ra These cosmetics are made by grinding ores like malachite and galena into a substance called kohol It was then liberally applied around the eyes with utensils made out of wood bone and ivory Women would also stain their cheeks with red paint and use henna to color their hands and fingernails and both sexes or perfumes made from oil mar and cinnamon the egyptians believed their makeup had magical healing powers and they were not entirely wrong research has shown that the lead based cosmetics all along the nile actually helped stave off eye infections then they did not ride camels The camel was not used regularly in Egypt until the very end of the dynastic age. Instead, the Egyptians used donkeys as beasts of burden and boats as a highly convenient means of transport. The river Nile flowed through the center of their fertile land, creating a natural highway and sewer. The current helped those who needed to row from south to north while the wind made life easy for those who wished to sail in the opposite direction the river was linked to settlements quarries and building sites by canals huge wooden barges were used to transport grain and heavy stone blocks light papyrus boats ferried people about their daily business and every day high above the river the sun god ra was believed to sail across the sky in his solar boat